Hello everyone. Okay. Good evening. So nice to see you and hope you're all well and blessed and happy and trusting in the Lord for signs, wonders and miracles. miracles. We thank you, Jesus. Hello. I don't know. We've got three people on. Maybe give us a little yeah, hi, Shirley. We're running a little late. I made a mistake. But and, rather uh, late than never. You're panicking. <laughs> and I had it only on me. <laughs> and I was wondering why we didn't have yeah. people on. So we also yeah. didn't have the color right. The settings yeah. have changed on the on the, the phone. So yeah. I hope we don't look too anemic out there. <laughs> and uh, we're trying to do what we trying to do. Is this is this the one uh, on now? Uh, Let's Hello, see. Direksha. How are you, darling? Hello, Tilla. Marla. How are you, sweetie? Hope you were okay on Mother's Day. Arriba. Sitizwe. Uh, and Hamish and Ellie. Hello, John. How are you guys doing? Sharon, hi. <laughs> and uh, Laurel and Kim and Craig. So nice to see you all tonight. Gloria. You have a wonderful name, Gloria. It's glorious. <laughs> when you were born, it was a glorious occasion. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, amen. That's Sorry wonderful. guys, I'll be with you in a moment. Uh, we just had some technical okay. difficulties. And Melanie, how are you sweetheart? Um, Waiting yeah. for my feet to come on my. Hello, Dawn. Um, I haven't seen you for ages. My okay. goodness. All right, I've got it's us. so lovely to see your name. And us. I know Chris is there with you. Hello, Chris. And uh, we trust you all well. Yes. Hello, Sarah Kate. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you very much. Rebo, what's the weather like out there in the United States? <laughs> Gloria, that's so sweet. Yeah, your name is Glorious, short for Glorious. Yeah. So whenever I see you, I feel that the Lord is glorious and kind and merciful to us. Amen. Shines forth his glory. Yes, it's all about the glory of God. Amen. Hi Claudine, Salas, how are you? How are you? I don't really know you, but God does. He does know everybody, he knows you by name. He created all of us, he made us special. Salas Maboti, I just feel a word for you. Is that uh, God, you know, I just see you. It's like you're holding on to sails and the winds blowing like crazy and uh, i feel god says let go of those sails let let go cast that key on him it's like you're trying to hold the fort together <clears throat> it's like as though, though you've been made responsible to look over certain people but they're taking advantage of you and i feel the lord says let let go let let the boat go in fact let there be a shipwreck i know it sounds crazy remember paul went through three shipwrecks and uh, the one actually was was uh, when you see it i think it's acts 28 i'm not too sure yeah. but when he landed on the isle of malta it was his destiny it was god's destiny for him because that whole island got saved mm -hmm. if you read the account of i think he healed uh, publius's dad who had dysentery or something like that and uh, i mean the gospel so he so god you will use that mm -hmm. uh, for his glory and um and it's, it's draining you financially it's draining you emotionally i see it could be family or business it's it's just something that that has been put on you uh, in with the, in justly and i feel god says let go he'll take care of it you know uh, strange word eh? <laughs> strange word yeah. and uh yeah just having some tea uh, with my darling <laughs> uh silas as well i just uh, was sensing that the lord was also saying there's going to be financial breakthrough uh, i 
I see in the pipeline there is um, money coming, money coming into your hands that God has planned. It's you deserve it. You've worked hard for it. And the Lord says, don't worry about it. It's all organized. It's coming through for you. And just remember, you know, when as a child of God, when we say we love the Lord, then we honor God with the first fruits of our income. Amen. Yeah. And uh, don't really need to remind people, but the word of God is very clear on what we are to do. So it's awesome. Silas, so wow. So good. So guys, don't forget to like and share so that others can watch at the same time and come online at the same time. That's also the nice thing to do it in the beginning so that people can also join us. Yeah. Uh, some people might never press like, Casper, you guys said you were going away. Well, Was he, that a joke? He's using the tree as a signal. <laughs> he's using <I'm>, it. <laughs> I've got a word no. for, for Tio Clarson. Uh, Tio, to be honest, I don't know whether you're a guy or a girl, but um, I, I just see God says, put your face toward his face. Yeah. And, and uh, two scriptures come to my mind because I, I feel like there's things happening around you. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you've ever experienced, I have birds flying and knocking you. You know, I used to go to work there one time and there was an Indian miner that used to bomb and, and claw, uh, sorry, a miner, uh, excuse me, a miner bird uh, that used to fly and, and claw into my head. One time it actually made my head bleed because it had babies and I don't know if it was a demon bird or what, you know. And uh, so I would get out my car and I would run and like, I would wait to look, you know, with this bird. I'd put my bag over my head, I'd just swing yeah, my bag. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. and it, it just seemed to not have a liking yeah. for me, you know. Yeah. And I feel that's what you've been doing to circumstances. They've been picking and picking at you. And I just feel that, uh, I hope I said your name right, Tio. Look at Jesus. When I say look at Jesus, you look to Jesus through his word. You look unto Jesus. The Bible says the author and finish of your faith. Yeah. Faith is imperative because without faith, uh, it's impossible to please God and to have his blessings on your life. Because yeah. pleasing God brings benefits of the blessing. And uh, what is not a faith is sin. So he's yeah. the author and completer of your faith. And then that other scripture we know so well, which is 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, because you, that, that's how you start, you humble yourself by coming to God is, is humility. So yeah. don't, don't, you, know, you don't have to come screaming, frothing and whatever. You just come to him in the name of yeah. Jesus. And he, remember, he said, and they seek my face, not my hands. Hands is what he gives you, but the face is the relationship. And, you know, um, I think my wife would be very upset or, or let me rather use this illustration. If a child um, comes to, and this is a sign of immaturity, is when a, a child uh, parent comes home, and, what have you got me? What have you got me? Mm -hmm. Instead of like, hello, I daddy, like hello, I mommy, I love you. Yeah. What did you buy me? What did you buy me? Yeah. And so it's a sign of, of immaturity when we want things from God before we establish a relationship with him. Another scripture comes to my mind, and this could be for others too. Remember, I always talk about the ricochet prophecies, <laughs> the echo prophecies. <laughs> and so this could be getting to others as well. Remember, Jesus said in um, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the king and his kingdom. That's how it goes in the original. And his righteousness, his way of doing things and all these things Amen. will be added to you. And I feel God's touching your body. Mm. There's a healing uh, you, uh, uh, anointing coming on your body. You, and Jesus. there's one particular family member that, that's quite sick at the moment. And I just decree healing upon them in the name and by the blood of Jesus that, that uh, uh, they will be healed and they will rise from that uh, bed, sick, what do you call sick bed. Mm -hmm. In the name and, uh, of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Silas, just to say to you, uh, because so of the Silas, it's T. I'm no, no, no. Silas, still talking to Silas. Yes. Okay. Silas Sorry. said because of network, he missed it. All you have to do is go back to 
Pastor Richard's page and watch again. It will repeat. It yeah. will repeat. Yeah. So you can just share it now, my precious, and you can watch it a little later. And that was a lovely word for you because there was some to do with Pastor Richard. Got a word there and I got a word for you as well. So awesome. God's faithful. Especially the one that I gave you. I think you're going to like that one really well, you know. <laughs> But yeah. uh, you have to wait for it to finish, so we cannot repeat it. Yeah, hi Sarah Kate. That's so funny. We got an SMS today. You were in ICU, Silas. Oh, Father, let's just pray over Silas's body. Yeah, yeah. What was that due to, Silas? What was wrong? If he, if he doesn't, if, mind if you don't telling, mind telling yeah. us what was wrong, and then we know what to actually pray for. Maybe just give me a little indication. Uh, oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for touching. Guys, come on, let's all put a hand up. Put a hand up for Silas. That's, we're in agreement. Uh, we're in agreement for healing over Silas's body. That's what online is all about. It's like a family. And we're agreeing. So I want you to put your hands up and we are praying. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, we in pray the name for of Jesus. Silas right now. Thank you, Father. God, you touched him with a prophetic word straight away. Uh, two, two prophetic words. And Father, you you know what issues? We, you know your son. You yeah. know your son. You know what you brought him thank out of you, ICU. You're healing his heart right now, his entire body. In Jesus' name. The, the flow of the blood through his entire body, Father, that stress with family matters, Father. Silas, you need to give all those stresses to the Lord yeah. because it's the Lord that carries them. You know, family, there's some things you and I cannot do. There's some stuff we cannot do. And we have to give it over to God. There's some people you need to give over to God. There's some people I'm sensing right now while I'm online, Pastor Richard, I'm sensing online here that there are some family members that are pushing other family members like a controlling devils in people, trying to control other people. And that you don't know which way to go, which way to go. And the Lord says, just you give them over to God because God, only God, only God himself can actually deal with very controlling people because most people that are controlling, it's a bit of fear. It's a bit of fear. And so they do that out of fear. So God doesn't want anybody to fear. God wants families to be happy and blessed. And uh, God will help you, Silas. Don't you worry. You look to God. You look to God, my young man. Listen to God. You listen to him. You, you, you put your life on his word and it's by the stripes of jesus silas you are healed i command that heart to beat properly i command that stress and the worries and the anxieties to leave you now in the name of jesus stop carrying it let god carry it for you i just take a break and take a breather in, in second part of the prophetic words god is going to bring finances to you so obviously it, you can have a holiday yeah. amen amen We've got our phone back, so you can send messages. But I was telling them mm -hmm. that it was so funny. We got a, a SMS today from Casper and Deb saying they won't be on the live at five tonight because they're going camping. So we like, so, and there won't be any signal. So Pastor Richard made a joke with Casper and said, okay, you just, you can use a tree as a, as a signal. And then tonight they came on, so... He says, using a tree is the signal. Meanwhile, they're a little bit late in going, but it was really funny. Okay, I've got a word for, uh, I just see a pastor. Oh, gosh, let me just go up the feed again. Uh, okay, Tiff hasn't got it down here. Just give me a second. Pastor Amir Nafiz. I don't know if you're from India or Pakistan. Mm. But uh, so I just feel there's been quite an array and attack on your ministry. Um, I kind of see in a, in a, in a Muslim infested area. Mm. Uh, could be Hindus as well, but there's a strong religious force. And uh, you, there's been a bit of hesitation for you to go out. But I feel 
that if you went on a three-day fast and you just sought the Lord, and I want you to read afresh the Gospel of John. And, uh, you know, there's some prophecies sound so simple, but it's a key. And, and you're going to see revelation in there that God's going to show you for you to act upon in such faith of who Jesus is and what he wants to do. And, and I believe the gift of faith in certain areas is going to come to you, Pastor and, and, and Amir. And, uh, I, but I'm seeing that you've got to stretch out to, to, to heal the sick. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm feeling very strong is that you've got to really uh, step out and have healing meetings, maybe four weeks in a row. And just uh, title the sermon, How Jesus Heals Today, something like that. Everybody wants healing. Yeah, you, you know, one preacher said that that healing is God's dinner bell for the unsaved to come and be saved. That's so true. Yeah, Pastor Kia Vomoran said true. that. And so I just feel that there's so many sick people around there that I see your church growing double within a year of you just stretching out to do healing. And obviously there's going to be some demonic manifestation and the discerning of spirits will come in. And even a word of knowledge will, will surprise you that you yeah. will know and you will say, is this the, the sickness? And, and that will even be more of, a, of a, uh, what God will use to really make them believe in him. And then you'll lead them to the Lord. You know, I just saw, saw a, an amazing miracle take place in India. I don't know if it's India or Pakistan. Okay. I'm talking about India. Okay. India, they, where the biggest devastation, the biggest attack right now in the world is going to be, right, is God showed me that he's going to raise up young boys, like not too little, teenage young adults that are going to have such radical faith in this time. Mm. In this time, just as the devil can raise his agents, God yeah. is raising his sons. And they're going to actually have such miracle power. Young men of God are going to be raised and it's going to go for decades. Decades. Mm. Their ministries are going to run for decades where people are actually can't breathe and they're dying and the dead to be raised supernaturally in this time in India. And that's what I saw. I just saw dead people standing up, standing up, standing up, standing up. Uh, they had been declared dead and then suddenly God just raising them up and that the people must not be afraid, must not be afraid. God says they will fall on uh, all around you, but don't worry about that because God's power is with you. His power is with you. And those that are... Uh, um, God has a divine call on their life, on, uh, on all his children. He's got his hand upon all of them, and they must not fear because God is with them. God will protect them supernaturally from the enemy of this, this virus there. And I, I just saw young That's men, Thank you, young men and women that have radical faith, the dead raised, and people suddenly just healed yeah. from deathbed to That's healing. Powerful. No mandla zocho kazi. I don't know if I said that right. And Kizana, I just uh, feel a word for you. I see business. I see God really has His anointing on you for for wealth. And uh, there's been also an attack in that area where people have betrayed you, misused you. And I just feel God saying, uh, No mandla, you got to start getting strong in you. You know the Bible says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And, you know, when, whenever you go in an area, and I feel that out of that will come ministry. God, God does it a lot. He puts people in business. And then out of that, they, they meant to be witnesses to those that they, they're dealing with from time to time. Not everyone will hear you, but I just feel that, that there's been a, a business. Someone in your family was very powerful in business. And I don't know if they, they did, they, they, there was a broken relationship and so you were supposed to have carried on the baton or, or worked alongside them, but the anointing's still on you, Nomandla. And so I just feel you need to 
to uh, learn some stuff about business, uh, get business uh, acumen inside of you, study. Maybe you, you, I don't know how, Google, get a book and in certain areas of business, uh, you know, and uh, I, just, I, I just see God anointing you in that area. And uh, I just uh, see a lot of stress also on you too. It's almost like you've given up in a certain area, but uh, I see God encouraging you to say, pick, pick that sword up that fell, dust it off, and by faith move on, and you watch God will come through for you. I want to share the message now that God gave me. Have you got a word? No, just Charlene just put something up here. That okay. is, it's going to go, and we're going to forget about it. Okay. Even more great news from Charlene Stone. No more chemo needed. Praise be to Thank our you, King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Now, Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Isn't that powerful, Pastor Rich? Eh? It's awesome. Now, listen, the word, it might take a little bit long. You need to stay on and listen to this word. It's, yeah. it's vital because I see some of you have posted that you need jobs. I see Reba posted for healing, for COVID. Yeah. Someone posted for a job. And this message will help you to get what you are posting for. And we're going to do some activations afterwards. Yes. So nice. um, I'm going to, and if you saw me advertise, you know, I always try and advertise. Sometimes I, 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 I share the message that I'm going to preach. And, I've, and you, you saw there was a hammer. If you saw my post, there was a, a, a judge's hammer that was done. In other words, it was a done deal. Yeah. And uh, so the message I want to share tonight is decree the decree or declare the decree. Yeah. And uh, it yeah. comes from Psalm 2 verse 7, where it's talking about Jesus, funny enough, and his rule and authority over the whole world. And uh, verse uh, 7 says, I will declare the decree of the Lord. So the, the, the decree of the Lord actually starts with scripture. This is where God's decree is. And, and I looked up a lot of scriptures in decree and I found out that many decrees were, uh, it, it's like a command, it's like a law. A decree is like a law. It's a set thing that cannot be changed. And then we have to go and enforce the decree. Mm. You know, that's, that's how they do it. The, the decree was said, and then people had to go and do what the decree is. Um, the book of Ezra and Esther had most of the words for decree in it, interestingly enough. Mm. And uh, so then Proverbs 8 verse 15 God says, by me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. That's us. We are the kings of the king, <laughs> the Bible says. And Revelations 1 verse 4 says, we reign as kings and priests in this life. And so there are few meanings uh, of what the word decree means in the scripture. The main one, the major one is the Hebrew word dabar. Uh, you, you know, it's very similar to Deborah, you know. <laughs> If you look at the root word, and it means a command, an authoritative decree that will stand and, and uh, it, will, it will set everything in order. Uh, it means to, uh, to also rehearse, to subdue. One of the meanings of the word dabar means to subdue. So when you say something, that's what stands. No matter what the circumstance is, remember Jesus did it. Jesus, you could say every person he healed, every way he taught, every storm he stilled, it was twice, um, was with a debar, peace, be still, uh, come out of him, uh, go, you know, uh, take up your bed and walk. It was, it was commanding power and, and he was the living word. So when we decree the decree of the Lord, it, it, it will happen to us. So, the, so that's one of the meanings. Then there's the word declare. Sorry, in Psalm 2, verse 7, the word declare means to score with a mark as a tally or a record. It means to inscribe, to enumerate, 
uh, to celebrate even. Yeah, I will declare the decree of the Lord. It means to count, to number. So it means to scribe. So in other words, like, a, like a tattoo. It means to engrave something. And you know when you engrave something, it's there. It's there for good, basically. And then the word decree there means to hack as well. In other words, to, to pioneer, to break through, uh, to set in order what must be. It's like going through a jungle. You, you set a pathway. That's what the word uh, decree in Psalm 2 verse 7 means. It means you make the rule. You make the pathway so everyone can walk to safety on that decree. Interesting, eh? It means to appoint something. It means a commandment. A commandment to make what's convenient. Uh, to, to set as the custom, uh, the due law, um, the ordinance, the portion. The portion, sorry, uh, what the set time is. These are all what meanings are, the statute. I'll never forget, and uh, I don't want to bring the story behind it, but God said to Reynold Bonker once, and this is what launched his ministry. God said to Reynold Bonker, my word, this word, my word in my mouth, yeah. God's mouth, is just as powerful as my word in your mouth. So when we speak scripture, that's the, the main decree of the Lord. It's being decreed, listen to me, by whose stripes you were healed. Amen. It's being decreed. Yes. Whoever yes. shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's being decreed. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It's being decreed. That Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No Amen. man comes to the Father but Amen. by him. It, you understand, the word is the Amen. decree of God. And when we de declare this decree, then things will happen for us. The same results when, if God would, would stand on the earth and speak. Because remember, Jesus was God incarnate. Amen. And so when Jesus said to the storm, peace, be still, it obeyed him. And it's exactly the same with us. When we speak the word of God in faith, it will happen. That's why we can operate in Isaiah 55 verse 11 too. Uh, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. God says, it will not return to me void, unfurnished or empty, but it shall accomplish what I please, what you and I please. If it's in line with God's will, listen, surely you want to be healed. Surely you want to be debt free. Surely you want to be uh, rid of depression, fear, anxiety, and all those things. That's, that's the will of God. So when you decree what pleases God, it it's brings pleasure to you and your household as well. But, and it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper. In other words, it shall expand and multiply and even go beyond what the thing where I sent it. The New Living Testament says it this way. It is the same with my word. I sent it out, I send it out, sorry, and it always produces fruit. Yeah. It will accomplish all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. I like that translation. It's so straight. Really good. And now I want to just read a portion of, of uh, Job chapter 22. And we all know verse 28. I see someone's already posted verse 28. But I want to read from verse 21 to show you the context of the power of a declaration. Mm -hmm. But there's things that lead up to that. You can't just go out and talk. You, there's, there's, you've got to have the right condition of heart and mind yeah. and body, if I, if I can say so. Yeah. So Job says, Job uh, puts it very uh, brilliantly. And I want you to, that's why I want you to concentrate. And then we're going to activate some declarations of faith. Because it's, it's the same as the confession of faith. The Bible talks about the, the hold fast the confession of your faith. In other words, once you've said something, don't go back on those words. Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you receive. Don't go back on what you've prayed through doubt and unbelief and bad negative confessions and whatever. So from Job 22 verse 21, now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. <laughs> Thereby good will come to you. Receive, please, instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up and you will remove iniquity 
far from your tents. Your tent is your body. Then you will lay your gold in the dust and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. In other words, prosperity will come to you. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. <laughs> Sounds like Proverbs, eh? For then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. That, that speaks of favor. When you can lift up and look at God in the eye, that mm. means you're on talking terms with Him, you're on the right relationship, and favor will come to you. Mm. Okay. You will, uh, you will, yes, you will make your prayer to Him and He will hear you. Mm. Everyone wants that. You, don't you want God to hear you? And mm. you will pay your vows. Sure. Bring your tithes and offering. Go to mm. church. Say your prayers. Fast. Forgive. Yes. Those are the paying your vows. Yes. Read your Bible. <laughs> now, then verse 28 only comes around. You will also declare or decree a thing, and it will be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. Mm. So, so the power from your mouth is because of all those other things you've positioned yourself to. Yeah. Then when you speak, you know a hammer can't hit itself. God's word doesn't jump out the pages of the Bible. This is a good one, my babe. And, and do its thing for you. You and I have to activate this word. Yeah. We've got to acquaint ourselves with him, be at peace with him, do what's right and get him into us. Then when we talk, my goodness, that, that word comes out. Yeah. And light will shine on your ways. Being, God's, acqu being acquainted with God. Hey, is, is that's the where key. it starts. It's yeah, that's why, I, that's why I felt to read right yeah. from there. And uh, so. Uh, and not casual, like really you, acquainted. You've got to be serious. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. when you pick up a hammer, you've got to have strength to yeah. hit that thing. You can't just mm. tap, tap, mm -hmm. macatini special, you know. You've got to hit that blow. You've got to strike the blow. Yeah. You've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His yeah. might. And this is how you become strong, through obedience to His yeah. word. Then verse 29 says, When they cast you down and you say, you go opposite. You say, exaltation will come. Exaltation come. Hmm. So you, whatever happens to you, you decree the opposite. You decree the, the return. If they punch you, uh, if they take away your money, you say, money, come back. Yeah, if the, back. Your, your body gets uh, sick, you say, healing, come. Yeah. Can you see that? that that's yeah. the power of the declaration there. Whatever is done to you, you reverse it. Yeah. You, uh, cast down Jesus. exaltation. Yeah. You reverse whatever is thrown at you. Mm. Then he will save the humble person. Yeah. So you can't say it arrogantly and full of pride. He will even deliver one who is not innocent. You'll, you'll be a witness to the unbeliever. Yes, he will be delivered by the purity of your hands. Your hands what do your hands do? Work? Stuff like that. And the word de declare here means to cut down or off. It means to destroy and to divide and to exclude or decide, to decree, to, to even snatch. In other words, to, 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 to make something a priority. Nearly finished. I hope you're getting something here because we're going to put this word into an activation and we'll carry on ministering. Remember Paul said, we believe, therefore we speak, 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 speak. <laughs> Have you heard those, those uh, songs or when people talk, you know, they echo the one word. So I'm doing that as though I'm a, a technical thing. Therefore, we speak, 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 speak. Keep speaking. Scripture is in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, faith is a powerful force. Do you know that faith works every time? Every, Every time. time. Yeah. Faith does not fail. Why? Because faith works by love and love yeah. does not fail. That's it. Faith never fails. Yeah. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. And Jesus said, if any man love me, keep my commandments. When you keep God's commandments, you're walking in love. 
and love never fails. And then when you activate your faith and you're uh, uh, believing for something and you decree it, it happens. It happens. It happens. <laughs> it happens every time. Jeremiah, wait, I haven't finished speaking. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. Do you know that, that your mouth is the biggest weapon mm -hmm. and the biggest um, resource of miracles sitting right here? Mm -hmm. Right here. You don't realize you carry the very words of God. And as, as God said to Renaud, Reynold, my word in your mouth. So let me say it like this. Richard, God says to me, God says to you, put your name there. Debbie, Shirley, gosh, there's so many names there. Tafadzwa, Reba, uh, Dominique. God's word in your mouth is just as powerful as God's word in his mouth. But you've got to say it. You've got to speak it. And then this is what will happen. Look at the result. Jeremiah 23 verse 29. Is not my word like a fire that consumes all that cannot endure the test? God is a consuming fire. That's why Amen. his word is a fire. Amen. Deuteronomy in Hebrews calls, calls God a consuming fire. He will, he, will, he will overcome. He'll swallow up like the serpents of Aaron and Moses swallowed up the serpents of Janis and Jamis. Uh, death is swallowed up in victory. God's word swallows up the enemy. Whatever the enemy meant evil for you, God will turn it for our good. You, Says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks in pieces the rock of most stubborn resistance. Mm -hmm. So I want you to speak up, warrior, not and stop making excuses, warrior. You know the <laughs> warrior, person who worries, makes excuses. Stop making excuses that you the, the scripture says, I want to encourage you with this now. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So Amen. come on. I trust you got something out of that. Decree the decree. There's all the scriptures there. You know, I, I give a mini Bible study. Here. You could say every time I share the word, uh, share something that is noteworthy, that will help you in your faith. And, and uh, so I want, to I want you to take these scriptures and, and act upon them. Go over them. Uh, do it for homework, you know, and uh, you'll see God will come through for you in a most tremendous way. We're going to activate these words now. Uh, Andrew Duncan, uh, Andrew, I just uh, I see that, that you, you, you got the zeal of God. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I just feel that you need to help people because you, you just want to go, go, go. <laughs> Andrew, I see that kind of a person, Andrew Duncan. And, you know, there's some people you just got to wait for. The Bible says you that are strong ought to bear them that are weak. And so be patient with those that are coming up behind you. You know, God had to rebuke me many years ago that I don't judge people or treat them by my own standards of gifting and ability. And, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Colisi, the Springbok rugby captain player, cannot go to someone... Who, who, who's not built like him, who doesn't have the strength like him, yet wants to play rugby and demand the discipline that he has on his life. He's got to coach the person according to the level of that person's ability. Amen. That's what the Bible says, that Jesus, remember the parable of the talents? Yeah. He hands out talents according to each one's ability. Yeah. And so I just feel, Andrew, you've got to just be a little bit more slower on, on, on and not... You know, uh, just coach people. You know, uh, I heard a Christian psychologist say this once, that you don't grow children from above. You grow them from underneath. You push them up, you encourage them. And so I just feel that there's a team under you that, that God is raising up and people that you're influencing. And God says just, you know, uh, raise them up uh, and... Uh, I just see that on your on your life. Andrew, there. I just saw a lot of uh, very poor people around you, and God using you to minister into their lives and to enrich their lives. And I saw you actually taking a, a few young men, um, and 
under your wing and uh, to actually train in the things of God. And it's, it'll take time, but I, th I really see uh, such um, amazing young men coming out from under your hands eventually. So, but remember, it all takes time. Training takes time. Children yeah. to grow up takes time. And uh, so I just saw God doing a mighty thing there. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ogango Frederick, if you're still on board, uh, I just uh, uh, see God, you know, uh, pulling you aside from certain relationships that are not good for you. You don't ever be intimidated by wealth. Don't be intimidated uh, uh, by people who are gifted and people who are famous. Uh, God says you, you be you. And I just feel that God, uh, Ogango, is, is wanting to do some just overalling on you, Ogango, the person Ogango. Mm -hmm. you, you've been hurt, and I just see there's a wound of rejection in you that, uh, you know, causes you to, to just go overboard on being too nice to people and, and, and letting them, you know, uh, no, no, God is your sustenance, you know. Um, Many times Christians, we have this hobo spirit where we think somebody else, we're waiting for somebody else to bless us. We're waiting for someone else to help us. Yeah. But you know, when you so help and you yeah. become and you, you go out of your way, that's yeah. how you become strong. Yeah. You help others. You that's witness right. to others. You preach the gospel. You lay hands on the sick. Jesus said, they that believe shall do these things. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel, take your faith to the next level of Gango and start going out there and doing the word and, and you will watch in that strength. And you know what? According to Hebrews 11 verse 6, this is for a lot of you guys out there, all of you, God rewards those of us that serve him because it says that. It says God rewards the diligent seeker. The word reward there means to uh, is payment for service. <laughs> so when we serve God by seeking him, and doing what he commands, he pays you. Yeah. And I've seen that. One of the greatest forms, listen to this, we've proved it. Yeah. One of the greatest forms, this might shock some of you out there. There's another way to make money. Can I tell you the, a, a sure way to make money? Is when you lead people to Christ. And you go out of your way. And you break the barrier of fear and pride and excuses. And you just go out there and you tell people about Jesus Christ. God starts providing all your needs. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this is, yeah. it was a word to me one day. Yeah. God said, if you meet my needs, I'll meet your needs. And, and you know what? We never did it for money. No, ever. but this is what God said. If yeah. you meet my needs, I, for a split second, I said, Lord, what, what, what are your what do you needs? Mean? Yeah. And this is the scripture that came to me. God's greatest need on the earth is that none should perish, but all come to repentance. Amen. And the Lord, and I knew I had to go out radically yeah. like never before and become a witness. Yeah. And we did that, you know, uh, I've always been a witness, but for some reason, maybe I was slack, I don't know. And we went out and I'll tell you, miracle after miracle of provision and finances came to us. Mm -hmm. And when you uh, flow, let me say this, everyone wants to flow in the prophetic, we want to flow in this, yeah. we want to flow in miracles. Mm -hmm. No, we want to flow in witnessing and soul winning. That's and you watch real, God. <laughs> that's real Christianity. You watch God come through you know, for we, you. We had such a little in our lives, we, but we didn't even bother about what we had and didn't have. And then when we started going on the streets and winning people to Christ and just sharing Jesus Christ, singing in the streets, we actually did that. Many people actually got saved. Many people got saved, gave their and lives, healed. a lot of people, and healed, and a lot of people recommitted their lives to Christ again. And, they, you know, we're living in a, in a time now where people will just easily give their life to Jesus because there's no surety, there's, there's nothing sure except for God and His Word. And people need God. They need God right now. Amen. So it works. And when you do God's work, he, he'll do yours. You know that stuff that you can't pay, those bills you can't pay, <laughs> those things you can't do, that car you can't fix, it's standing in your garden right now, all broken down a skadonk. God says, I can give you a new one. I can give you a new one. But you see, it's not, it's not about what we can get from God. 
it's about what can we do for him just just move on focus on him focus on what he's asked you to do and the rest of it will come you'll see Charlene, I, I don't know if you're still on board, but if, if someone can maybe contact Charlene, I'm giving you this word, because I know you, you've you been a worshiper and a singer for the Lord, but I don't know if you've ever written any songs. Sure. And I feel as God wants to give you a song out of the experience you've yeah. just had. And it's going to be a profound song. Yeah. You don't have to know music or anything, write it. Just write the song. Mm. Write what you feel in your heart. Um, there's a lady at DCC who did that. Um, she wrote a song called You Make Me Brave. What's her yeah, name again? Um, oh, <laughs> I forgot you. Yeah. But it's, a, it's out there. And yeah, there's, no, there's no Christian words to it or whatever. But it, it's just okay. called You Make Me Brave. Uh, Lisa. Lisa. Gerard or something like Gerard, that. Gerard, yeah. And... Gerard. Uh, in the first week that she posted on Facebook, my son actually recorded he it for me and apparently yeah. helped her write yeah. the song a bit too. My son's very clever, very creative. He's got his own recording company as well. Yeah. He's done very big guys. You know, it came a Twitter's recent album, My Son Did That. Yeah. My son did that music in his studio, <laughs> you know. And uh, Kaya said that Joshua is the only one he can trust because Joshua's very truthful. If he says think something's wrong, he'll say, no, that doesn't sound right. Do it this way or go this way. My son is incredibly creative. Anyway, and uh, so the first week, I think that it was on Facebook or YouTube, there were mm. 52,000 views. <laughs> and I, I, she hasn't heard this, but I said to my wife, that, mu that song is going to be in a big movie one day. And it's encouraging. And song. that song, Charlene, just to say, she had uh, coronavirus when it first that, yeah. when it first yeah. came to South Africa. Yeah. She was the very first person that I think I found out that had coronavirus. Sure. And she nearly died, collapsed yeah. in her shower, and the ambulance had to come and take her. She was in ICU, and there was it was such a, a very difficult experience she went through, but she experienced. The healing power of Jesus, yeah. you know, and that whole song is "You, Lord, make me brave," you mm -hmm. know, "You and Your Word," and uh, it's got such a beautiful melody. You you must all go and try and uh, pay for it, and I think you can download yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's just called it's "You Make Me you Brave" make by Lisa Gerard. I don't know how you spell, yeah. spell it. And it it's you know it was yeah. playing in our car today, and I said to my husband, "I just I love this song." Because that's literally what we could all be singing right now, is Lord, you make us brave. You make us brave to go every day, one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. We're already, we're already in May. We're already in it's May. It's amazing. It's amazing. Let, let, let us have an amazing month. <laughs> <laughs> you catch that? Amazing. <laughs> Great. May it all work out it's for prophetic. you. <laughs> Do you know, today is actually the anniversary of, of Israel. Uh, oh, wow. When they came back, and May the 14th is some anniversary. Yeah. And uh, that's why there's all hell breaking loose mm. there in Israel today. Over 2,000 rockets have been fired into Israel from the, the enemy. And uh, when you hear the news talk, they say that Israel is killing children and Israel bombed a building, but they just retaliating. <laughs> they uh, don't listen themselves. to the news, boy. Yeah. Pray, for the, pray for Israel at this yeah. stage. Pray, keep so praying. it's quite a prophetic day, to, day today as well. Thank you, uh, missionary Pastor Krupta, if you're still on board, <laughs> Uh, I just feel that the devil attacked your wife, and I don't know. Uh, I know this sounds horrible, what I'm about to say. I don't know if she's still alive uh, or she's very sickly. But if she's very sickly, see, prophets are not all knowing. But I just uh, I pray in the name of Jesus against oh, that spirit of death, uh, against your family, and I command healing and life in your family. And uh, God says he's, he's going to make up for a loss. So I see someone close to you, you died. And uh, I saw it was a woman, you know, it could be wrong, but it could even be your mother or someone, daughter or something, you know. But I see a woman in your life being quite close that died. And uh, 
God just is going to raise you up. You know, for those of you who've had lo loved ones die, I know it's horrible uh, to, to bring up the subject, but you know, the, uh, Jesus, what he did when John the Baptist got beheaded, if you read the scripture, Jesus went away to a lonely place. Then the very next thing it says, he came back and he healed the sick. So the best way to get back at the devil uh, against uh, the loss of a, of a loved one is to go and preach the gospel. Go and tell somebody about Jesus. You're getting the devil back because it's not God that, that takes our, our loved ones. It's the devil. He comes to steal, kill and to destroy. And I know the, the question is, but why did God allow it? They, I, I can't answer it. We nearly lost our son. And I'll be honest with you, if, if he did go, I would never... I don't think I would have ever gone at God. Yeah. What for? What for? God, it's not God's fault. And he is only allowed by the total grace and mercy of God. I'm telling you now. Yeah. But we thought we were going to lose him. And then we were preparing for that. But yet at the same time, we were calling out to God for his mercy. Yeah. And he was merciful to us and, and my boy. And... Uh, so it's a tough thing I'm bringing up, I know that, but you know, just, yeah. you go and, and you just serve Jesus, you know. You look at Job, yes, like, he had his whole family taken away from him. His, his, his wife says to him, curse God and die. Mm. Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. What a heart, eh? What a heart. And I uh, know it's tough, it's easy to talk like that, but yeah. I just feel somebody needs to hear that. And somebody needs to forgive if somebody was at fault for the death of one of their loved ones. Forgive them. It's you can't you can't change the past, man. It's I know it's horrible what I'm saying, but I just feel I'm someone's going to be set free and and have a release. And you move on and you serve God and you just get other people saved on their behalf. Just like the we read in Job 22 now that. A people will get saved through the innocent and the purity of your hands. People who are not innocent. And uh, don't fight God. Don't fight him. Sana Liswe Gabela, if you're still on board, um, and then we're going we're gonna to do some declarations of faith. Um, I just feel, Sana Liswe, that you've been pulled. Uh, it's like I see a hook in your left side. I don't know if it's real. But it's like on your left side where your kidneys are. And uh, there's like a hook there. But I, I think it's spiritual. If it's literal, it's whatever. But it's like you've been pulled to the left. And left speaks of like what's wrong, you know. Uh, uh, left speaks of judgment. Left speaks of, you know, the sinner's ways. And uh, in, in, some, in some instances. So I just feel there's been a pull on your life by the world, you know, and uh, God is gonna, he's cutting that thing loose. He's, he's, he's saying to you now, come on, I want you to just get back on track, get back on the path, and uh, I'm gonna begin to bring healing, inner healing to you, uh, even in your body. You, you, there's a condition in your body that, that nothing can give even God pray by big people. And God says, when you, uh, you always start becoming right, you start serving God, supernaturally, you'll wake up one day and that, that you'll be healed. But you've got to get back into serving God. And, and it's not hard. You know, it's, uh, Jesus said, uh, come to me. My service is easy. It's easy to serve. It's not, it's, it's allow the devil to, it, people say it's hard to be a Christian. It's not. It's allow the devil it's hard when you when you when you complicate the scripture. It's hard when you twist the scriptures. It's hard when you make excuses. It's easy when you just surrender. That, that is such a key. What I just said now is, is is scaring people. I used to be very scared, even as a strong Christian, very scared of the word surrender. You know that song, I surrender, I surrender all. We sing it, but do we really do it? Because it's you start with your heart. You surrender your heart. Yeah. Then you surrender your mind. Then you surrender your body. Then you surrender your your gifts, your talents, your money. 
and he, he make Jesus Lord over every area of your life because mm -hmm. it, it belongs to him. If, if you're a Christian, everything belongs to God and he has access to anything, anytime that he wants. You've got to be willing to say, okay, Lord, if you want that, which I call an Isaac offering sometimes, and yeah. a release of Isaac, you become dead to that yeah. desire of yours and you sure. give it. God tests us like it. I've had many Isaac tests. Oh, Lord Jesus, more than I can even count sometimes. And uh, God will come through for you. So I just Thank feel that. You. Okay, now this is what I want us to do. Because I see a lot of people have, I haven't read all the posts because I've, you know, I've been looking at the names. We've got our phone back. <laughs> Gosh. And, uh, but this is what I spoke about declaring the decree. Now, I want you to write there like Reba. I want you to write a, a confession of faith over your daughter. And we'll, and we'll agree with as much as we can keep up with. Somebody wanted a job for their son. Decree. And as much as you can, if you're a believer, uh, put the scriptures there. For example, um, this is a big one for a lot of us. A lot of us are in financial debt. And some of us don't know how we're going to get out of debt. Some of us are sick. We don't know how we're going to get healed. Some of us have got broken relationships. Some of us have got unsaved loved ones, children and parents. We don't know how they're going to come to the Lord. You decree the decree of the Lord. Uh, testimony of Pastor Nellie Roberts. I don't know if any of you know this story. But their oldest son, Llewellyn, well, they only got one son, <laughs> but Llewellyn backslid for about 18 years. He was a drug lord. He was a pimp. Man, he was vicious. He was, he was, he was scary. He used to even come into their house while they were still big preachers, break into their house with baseball bats, smash things, take things to sell for drugs. And every time Llewellyn came into their house, Pastor Nelly would say, man of God, Mm -hmm. And he would curse her, he would swear at her, he would scream at her, he would, mm -hmm. he would throw tantrums mm -hmm. and he would like, oh, don't say that to me. And uh, the, the, I think the story is that it got so bad with Llewellyn, they wanted to renounce him as their, their child. And the family came together to actually renounce him as their son because he was bringing disrepute on the ministry and whatever. And Pastor Nelly said, I can't, I can't, he's my son. Amen. He's going to be a man of God. Cut a long story short, man, if you hear the way that God brought him back, his testimony is out there somewhere. Maybe you should go to YouTube, especially if you've got someone on drugs or someone who's bound or, or someone, Google Llewellyn Roberts' testimony. I don't know if it's there, but I'm sure it's there. Uh, uh, and... Uh, and, and let them watch it. It's a radical testimony of how he got saved. But Amen. the thing is, Pastor Nelly kept on saying, man of God, to his face. And he's calling screamed, those things that be calling not those things that they were. Decreeing, decreeing the decree of the Lord. Yeah. So come on, I, w I hope you guys are starting to post now. Yeah, Reba, I see you started. Come on, Reba started the ball rolling. Uh, Come on, start start decreeing things. Come on, start decreeing where you want to be in life. Uh, some of you might need to decree contracts for business. Some of you might de not, might need to decree promotion. Some of you might need to decree against demons. There is a scripture. One of the scriptures, I just forget, I think it's Zechariah. Uh, the high priest Joshua wouldn't even rebuke the devil. He said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. <laughs> hey, that's a decree. He decreed a prophecy. I do that sometimes. Sometimes I'm in my prayer closet. I prophesy against demons. I, I literally, I prophesy their downfall. I prophesy their, their, their assignment will is shortly coming to an end. I prophesy to demons. Not good stuff. I prophesy what the scripture says. You are about to face the great I am, you are about to be cast into the pit of hell. And right now your assignment is over and I decree your work's broken over our lives. I decree uh, whatever sickness you've planned for us, it, it, I'm nullified. I decree whatever lie you've spoken to uh, those that are close to us, uh, those lies are, are going to unravel and dis be dismantled and, and, and I condemn every lie. And those lies as weapons will not... Uh, 
uh, what's that? No weapon formed against us, they will not prosper. I decree that every lie that you've uh, fired at us will will uh, go down and, and submit to the obedience of Christ. I decree every lie and fiery arrow that you've shot at us will be quenched by the shield of faith. Amen. I prophesy to demons. It might shock some of you. That, that, I've never even heard anyone preach that before. Amen. This is probably the first time we're ever hearing someone prophesy to demons. It's in the scripture. Maybe I must find more scripture for it. Yeah. Well, you can find it in the Old Testament a lot. <laughs> Where Satan rose up and God says, yeah, but you will... F uh, you, you know, I, I, I've got a prophecy for the devil right now. It's, uh, it's, it's in the book of Revelation. It says death and hell and, and, uh, and, uh, the, uh, and Satan and, and all the angels will be cast into the, the, the lake of fire and the bottomless pit. <laughs> and they'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. Well, Satan, guess what your final destination is? It's very soon, devil. Mm. Demons, they'll, it's very soon. You'll you're, be going home, you, devil. Yeah, you, you're on your way home, <laughs> devil. You're close to home, you're going devil. Home. You're close to your final uh, resting place. Hell, torment. Because you've tormented us, devil. Yeah. You will be tormented. Oh my goodness, I can hear demons screaming. Because Jesus, they, they said that to Jesus when he came to the other side and he began casting out the, the legion from that uh, man. What did the demons say? Please don't send us to the pit before our time. They know their time's coming. Even the devils believe and tremble. Mm. Come on, are you making declarations there? There's plenty of them. Yeah? Are, they, are you making them? Come on. Come on, I'm waiting just a few more moments and I want to, I'm going to make some declarations over you and I'm just going through some of your, your, your declarations here and uh, as much as you can, put scripture with it. Remember, mix your decrees with the word. Mix it with the word of God. Don't just say it sometimes, if at all you can. Mix it with the scripture. Mix it with the written word. Because it makes it powerful. Then it, then it lines up with scripture. And uh, you know, I know you don't have to correct it tonight. But, but I want you not to forget what you've written here. I want you to go and write these declarations down. Date it. Today's a very prophetic date. Yeah. The 14th of May. You know, mm -hmm. uh, just to say this. Uh, Israel and the church. I, I've got prophecies and I've got notes on this. They, they seem to be the left and the right foot. Whenever God does something in the earth, he does something with Israel and then parallel, almost the same time, it happens with the church. Wow. You can, it's, it's historic, in modern day history. When something happened with Israel, uh, May 14th, watch this, 1960, was it 1967? I, I just forget, because um, I used to teach this a lot. But I think it, was, it could have been 1967. I'm not too sure of the year. But that year, a great move of God and, and a restoration happened with the church. And, and, and it's like parallel. We, 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 we seem to go hand in hand. And with all these fiery darts coming, we're going to decree back at them. We're going to put our iron dome up. Because that's what the, the Jews have. They, they have this iron dome, which is like a, a, a military... Uh, covering that that when they the, these guys send their missiles they send the missile and shoot every missile down explodes in the air the only thing that sometimes falls is the shrapnel so that's all the devil is going to do is we're going to just feel a little bit of shrapnel falling around us but you know the war is on I'm about to preach a message called when God goes to war and uh, I'm just feeling that in my spirit you know to and uh, I know I'm going to get a lot of demonic resistance with that, with that uh, sermon. So if I can ask you, keep us and our family in prayer. Because um, I think the devil can read as well. And when he sees my notes, oh, oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> we better start trying to counterfeit, not counterfeit, but counterattack. We don't want this word to come up yeah. because we know. And uh, that's why the Bible says in, in the book of Revelation, 
that God brings Babylon, the world system, down mainly because of what of what they did to the apostles and prophets. It's on us that that and uh, we don't want you to feel sorry for us, but just cover us with some prayer as well too. And uh, I want to just also before I do this decree, thank those of you who have given toward our technology and our laptop. And uh, you know, if you still want to give, you're welcome. There's still things to to get to. We 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 we've kind of got just over the halfway mark, and uh, so I'm I'm getting counsel from a lot of techno people to get the right uh, instrument as well. Let's go. Come on! I want you to set yourself in agreement with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. For those that are live, and those that are coming on later. Oh God, please share this. Please share this because somebody needs to hear this message as well. And uh, it's very important. And I, I thank you for sharing. Every one of you that online should share. Don't, don't just don't not share it because what you give, you will receive. So you, you're giving out declarations to others. You're helping someone else come up uh, to the plate, as it were, you know, and come to the party. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, there are such precious people on the other side of this camera. Lord, we, we, we are here by technology, but Father, your word, you said you sent your word and you healed him. Oh, Father, in Matthew 9, you sent your word to the centurion's servant and he got healed. The same hour he began to amend. Father, you just have to speak a word. And Father, we stand in the place of Christ here today as Christ's ambassadors. Debbie and I, we decree upon your beloved ones salvation to those that father have unsaved loved ones i decree in the name of jesus christ of nazareth son of the living god their salvation i decree the works of satan the lies of the devil against every unsaved loved one be broken today in jesus name and i plead the blood of jesus against every demonic enemy against against every spirit of sorcery against every spirit of witchcraft and rebellion and pride and fear and 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 manipulation and deception and, and bondage i decree your eternal defeat satan and your powers be broken over every unsaved loved one here today I decree over the beloved of the Lord, the salvation of God to come forth in the forgiveness of sin, healing of their bodies, in uh, soundness of mind, material well-being, supernatural provision. I release upon everyone who is struggling and who needs to come out of debt. I call forth money. I call money in and I say, go and find your uh, the bank accounts uh, like a mighty mountain you finances be plucked up from the hands of the sinners and find your way to the righteous according to the scripture right now i decree supernatural debt cancellation a guy in our church was nearly a quarter of a million rand listen to me in debt of his light account for some reason they didn't cut his lights and just the other day he got a he got 170,000 rand off. But I tell you what, they are so faithful in tithes and, and offering. Sure. They, they will go into debt with their credit card just to make sure the tithe has kept coming through. Look yeah. what God did. They actually come online quite a lot. They come online well. quite a bit. Yeah. God, supernaturally, 170,000 yeah, is Thank a lot. It's so, a big worry for people. And, that and you know what I feel? Yeah. He has a sign to some of you. That, that, that was a big one but remember and now, now watch this when the small miracle takes place it's a sign the size of the cloud of a man's hand mm -hmm. remember when elijah prayed mm -hmm. i'm praying as a prophet you got to understand as a prophet it's prayer coming out to you now when elijah prayed for rain i know he had to send his servant up seven six times on the seventh time there was nothing but he came back and he said, there's a cloud the size of a man's hand. Yeah. When Elijah said, quickly, let's get going. 
and and uh, the, 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 I, uh, the, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I decree there's a sound of abundance of mercy. There's a sound of abundance of grace. There's a sound of abundance of favor that will manifest upon the body of Christ, upon the church, upon you. Hear me call you the beloved. That's, a, that's what I'm feeling from the Lord. I'm feeling his love, his compassion coming toward us tonight. And some of us are going to get bogged down and the blessings of God are going to overtake us. It's going to be a suddenly for some of us. But look for that little sign. When that little provision comes, declare the sound of the abundance of provision, the sound of the abundance of healing, the sound of abundance of salvation, the sound of the abundance of peace and favor, grace, mercy, and the such like. In the name and by the blood of Jesus. It's on its way. I see it in the spirit. I'm decreeing it over you. But wait for it. Wait for it. Though it tarry, wait for it. It shall surely come to pass, the Bible says. Tarry in the upper room. You'll be clothed with power from on high, from 500 to 120. Are you going to be the, the, the oh gosh, I don't know what the difference was. The others that, that couldn't even wait 10 days. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. Hold fast this confession of your faith now until it comes. Until it comes. I want to encourage you that if you've had a miracle and God has done something so supernatural yes. for you, like that same testimony, you know, it's very important that you give God praise. A lot of people, they, they decree and decree and decree and they pray and they pray and then they get the miracle and then they don't share that miracle publicly. It's important. This is a pl public platform to actually share your miracle and give hey. praises to God. It's just a type of way. And uh, we, like, it's like Charlene did today. I mean, you don't understand. Stage four cancer is not a joke. Gosh, what a miracle. It's a very serious thing. And she had gone through. I mean, remember the time when we prayed with Charlene and her husband for him to come back from America? And I think he was only back a, a few weeks a few weeks when she was diagnosed with cancer, you know, and, and his and coming back was a miracle it, too. That was, it was supernatural. God had given Pastor Richard prophetic word that her husband, God would make a way where there seemed to be no way. He got back and no sooner was he back than she was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Today she is cancer free in the name, in remission, in Jesus yeah. name. We believe God for the rest of her living life on this earth, Lord. And so when you do, when you do get a testimony, be very careful to give that praises to God. Yeah, yeah. Don't you hold on to it. And a lot of people, they forget. Yeah. Suddenly it, it's, you know, it just happened. No, it didn't just happen. It was God that did it. Yeah. God caused heaven and earth to move on your behalf. He's a good God. Yeah. He's a God that loves his children. He yeah, loves you so absolutely. much. So much. I just see people's hearts turning towards the Lord. I see more and more people turning to the Lord. You need to get used to the change. You know, you're decreeing and praying. Can my kids turn to the Lord? Can they serve? Get ready for what it's really going to look like. Yeah. Get ready for that miracle. Some it's like woman you prepare a cot for a baby. Exactly. Prepare, prepare your mind. Some your heart. some woman <laughs> pray my my husband to get saved, and when he gets saved, she just, he's like this absolute on fire for God person. Mm -hmm. Get ready for it mentally. You need to prepare. Uh, just before we actually leave tonight, and and we're just about done. But I would like to just advertise the marriage school yes. that I am going to be running. Uh, it's going to be starting on May the 22nd at 2 o'clock shop on a Saturday afternoon. I thought it's best to actually run it at that time. It's only an hour long uh, and it'll probably be for about six weeks. And it's a free course. Um, I just felt in my heart that I wanted to encourage people and uh, to, to work hard at what lovely gifts God has given them to work hard and to maintain you know you you send your car in for a service you do maintenance on your house well this is a marriage maintenance this we're doing maintenance on our marriages we're going to work on it we're going to invest it so far it's only for ladies but I do have a little surprise that if you are married and um, 
probably one of the men uh, you know that pastor richard can actually come online with one of our meetings and uh, share from a man's point of view but uh, there's been a quite a large response so we were going to do it just on facebook but we've decided to rather do it on zoom now so you will uh, mm. you have to email uh deborah shea seven gray are you putting it up now pastor richard's just putting up the the, the the course yeah there you go it's up so if you want to still be part of it it's it's literally for free all it's going to cost you is to be able to get on a zoom call you know some people don't have money and it's not about that it's not about that it, the, the biggest you know you've got to work at your marriage you've got to work at it it's not automatic a good marriage is not automatic to learn how to communicate and to love one another it's not a, i'm not doing this because i've got it all put together not at all not at all but there are some real nuggets that i've learned i've also traveled quite a bit in south africa many many years ago with a, a great woman of god that uh pastor ruth nicholas we, we traveled all over south africa teaching this particular marriage school and there's so much more that i have learned and putting together for this particular marriage school and there's some homework uh, our pastor nelly roberts apparently she also started this particular marriage school and um you know they've taught it and um so now it's my turn to step to the plate and, and teach just, it just to let you know my wife is qualified we've been married 39 <laughs> years and we're still in love. Yes. We're still together. We're still, you know, but love it, each but other. But it's work. Yeah. It's work. It's She's not easy. She's got some nuggets that'll Yeah. But you know, Pastor you. Richard, we put maintenance into everything in life, you yeah. know, except for, uh, and it's an institution. It's, it's a covenant you made before God. So you have to work at it. You can't get laxy days and just expect you know, whatever, whatever, to, to be like that. And there's a lot of nuggets I'm going to be teaching. And there's going to be homework. There's going to be homework that you're going to send me. And then out of all the girls that come online, I'm going to choose a, a queen of some sort of the best, the one that did the homework the most, the nicest. Princess. And, and two little princesses that go with it. Because I just feel that you really, not that anybody's better than anyone else, really, it, nobody is. But um, we will be asking your hubbies, you know, did she really do that? You know, did she go and mm -hmm. invest? Did she do that? And But there's a lot of nuggets that I have that I'd like to share. I'm very excited to share it. It'll only run for about six weeks and probably later on in the year, I might do another one, depending how successful it was um but I, you know marriage is something very sacred and um in this time of coronavirus and the you know the the lockdowns and people have literally there, there's been more divorce mm. there's been more divorce because people can't stand looking at each other's faces like all the time and meanwhile i said to my husband i said i don't know about you but i think i'm more in love <laughs> in this time than Absolutely. what I was even before. What are we doing Jeez, that's During lockdown, different? we've heard of so many people getting yeah. divorced and yeah. whatever, not us. We've drawn closer together, man. Yeah, we have. <laughs> it's, just, it's even been more of a yeah. blessing to us in our relationship. So either sense, way, yeah. we just want to share some of the nuggets with you. So bless you. You're not allowed to go offline now until you've shared this. Somebody needs especially the message that we share. They're doing so so well. please share again and uh, love you guys. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm sharing some very good stuff. Uh, our premiere uh, um, a message every Sunday at nine. In fact, I think there's a message of my wife that's coming on uh, this Sunday at nine o'clock. A very powerful word, and uh, that she shared at our church. I felt to put that up, and uh, so God bless you. We love you, Mwah. <laughs> and uh, our live at five family and the visitors who have come on board as well from time to time. See you. Have a good you. weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.